Hey guys, welcome to episode four of the Break Wall Breakdown. We were out Friday and Saturday. We had a couple varying temperatures, some other interesting stuff to talk about, which I'll get to in a minute. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It really helps us out. And I would really appreciate it if you leave a comment, even if it's to say good video, or if you don't like it, hey, not really my thing, I'd appreciate it if you did more of this. I wanna know what you think. Normally we do these lives, I'm pre-recording this one. Let me know what you think about that. The more likes, comments, shares, subscribes, all that helps the algorithm, helps push the video out there. I know these videos are only gonna be so big. The Long Beach break wall really is, is, as massive as it is, it's a micro fishery compared to nationwide. So this isn't something where I'm trying to get a million views because it's really just for you guys out here fishing the Long Beach break wall. That being said, I want to let you guys know what's going on. So let's get into it. The break wall this week was slow. Um, both trips, I ended up moving inside the harbor, fished inner harbor stuff, and that's really where a lot of our action came. We got a, we got a little on the outside. One of the big differences I'm noticing right now is that the outer harbor, not the outer harbor, I'm sorry, one of the big differences I'm noticing right now is the outer wall is is holding. It's staying at 51 degrees. It's staying cold out there. Which isn't necessarily the worst thing. Sometimes you get the big ones on the cold days. I just feel like right now, it being this time of year, potentially the fish are looking for warmer water. Now, the temperature difference we're seeing is Friday night we had 54 degrees on the Inner Harbor. Saturday we had 55 degrees on the Inner Harbor. Some people have the thought and philosophy that you know a fish will just hang in one area and not really ever stray too far from that. I think to an extent they move around. I don't know that they're necessarily migrating back and forth between the inner harbor and the outer harbor, but I'm definitely noticing, at least right now, that on the inner harbor, they are more active. Saturday night, we ended the night with 26 fish, and a majority of those came on the inside. Saturday night, 30, and I would say 26 of those came on the inside. Also Saturday, we ended up getting into some, some big ones. I fished an area that I haven't fished in about six weeks and I told the guy, they said, you know, other people have fished here, but we all, everyone fishes different. I don't end up getting over concerned about fresh water. People want that spot that no one else has hit. I feel kind of everyone fishes a little different. So I want to find a spot that I haven't fished in my style in a little while. I don't want the fish to be seeing my presentation over and over again day after day. So I told him, hey, I've been wanting to hit this spot. I haven't hit it in six weeks. Let's go in. And within, you know, within that spot, you're not going to a spot, you're going to a range. And within that range, I said, hey guys, just you know when we get to this part of it, be aware sometimes there's a good one right around this spot. And we got to that area and sure enough, back to back, 4.8 pounds, 5.2 pounds, ended up really making the night and really making you know my whole week seeing those fish come on board, really exciting. Especially one of our guys who had caught the 4.8, had never been out calico fishing before. He'd only fished for spotties. Literally, literally you know, using, using my gear, which is really cool, I set him up on a rod and reel and let him go for it. Hey guys, what's up? Sorry to interrupt with this commercial break, but I gotta let you know, I got my captain's license now. If you wanna book a charter? Hit me on Instagram, Artemis Charters. Shoot me a DM, we'll set something up. Big news, Waterman's Collective is gonna be selling the Artemis shirts. First design, Shark vs. Calico. It comes out June 1st. Waterman's Collective has a raffle coming up. Raffle starts this Saturday, June 1st. It's gonna run all the way till July 2nd. He's raffling off a brand new rod, red, white, and blue. I got a couple sneak peeks, it looks pretty sick. Any purchase of $30 or more gets you a raffle ticket. You purchase $75 or more, you get three tickets. 
The only way to get tickets is through making purchases. You can't just purchase tickets, you gotta buy gear. Go ahead and check out that Waterman site. They've got tackle, they've got baits, he's got all sorts of stuff, including the Shark vs. Calico t-shirt. Let's talk about what's been working. I have not been doing good on big baits. I can't wait till it gets to be the time where the big baits are hitting, where fast moving stuff's hitting. Fast moving's not really hitting. Stuff on the fall, stuff on the pause, stuff moving slow. Um, Guys have done good on the hookup baits, but there's also been times when the hookup baits aren't hitting. Some guys have been doing good on the gulp. And same thing, there's times where the guys aren't getting hit on the gulp, they're getting hit on something else. So as far as some of these scented baits, I definitely think they're great. I think they're a good tool. But if you come out and just want to fish one thing, chances are you're not going to do great in the overall scope of the night you need to kind of keep moving keep trying different things because they seem to be wanting different things throughout the night that one thing doesn't seem to be working the whole night but what is working fairly consistently is flukes um part of it's also finding the color of the night we ended up friday night moving to red hot specifically we're using hot cheeto from sudden impact and it wasn't mattering if it was a fluke or a paddle tail. It just needed to be small. They weren't wanting to hit the big ones. Other things to note, dark sleeper. I always keep dark sleepers on board. I always recommend having some three quarter ounce dark sleepers. They weren't really the ticket. Didn't really get much action on the dark sleeper. I can't say enough about this combo. Three quarter ounce war base head. And then I've been replacing the hook with the one aught or a two aught black tail and throwing on the four inch torpedoes from Sudden Impact. That's really been my bread and butter. I've been flying through these. I don't know if you could tell in the video how this one's tore up. They were chewing on it. But yeah, Friday, that hot cheetah was absolutely the color and we did pretty good on, on Saturday as well. Big fish on Saturday came on. One was on the hookup bait. One was on a brown fluke. Speaking of our big ones, I can't say enough about getting a good scale. The scale is made by Rapala. I've gone through quite a few scales. I typically test them up against a 10 pound weight. That one is by far the most consistent, only being a tenth of a pound off. And I can't remember if it's a tenth of a pound heavy or shy, but it's, it's relatively close. One of the reasons I like to say to have a scale is we can be having the conversation about how big your fish was, or we could be having the conversation of how big you thought your fish was. And I like the peace of mind of knowing how big it was, especially, you know, last night, the smaller one we caught was actually taller and fatter. And it wasn't until we weighed him that when you look back and went, oh yeah, you know, that one that looked bigger was actually a little shorter. So it weighed less. So it's, your eyes are deceiving. I see, I see quite a bit of big fish and they visually trick me. So I don't see why they wouldn't visually trick anyone else. Good to have the scale on board. All right, guys, let's get to some of these questions. Is the bioluminescence back? No, I, I haven't seen any signs of bioluminescence. Hopefully it's gone. You know, I don't necessarily know all the ingredients for what makes bioluminescence. I do know it flares up after a rain. So hopefully as it warms up here, we don't see another rain, which I think would cause it to, to bloom. I'm sure there's other reasons why it blooms. I'm, I'm just a guy who goes fishing all the time. I'm not exactly a scientist, although I should probably learn more about it. But no, hopefully we don't see any bioluminescence for quite a while. I got a question from Daniel from Dylan Bates. He says, are any of those my baits? Yeah, some of them were caught on Daniel's new color he just poured. I can't remember what he's calling it, toxic apple, something like that. 
Uh, I'll show a couple pictures here. But yeah, there was a period where they were hitting the chartreuse and there was a period where they weren't hitting it. It's just, you know, about changing and realizing that bite's turning off. Find out what the next thing they're after is. <clears throat> Another question, do you use scent? Yeah, I like the Procure Calico Cocktail. They all work good. I am a big proponent of scent. If I were to grab one of my tackle boxes, open it up, smell it. it smells like smells like plastic. I don't care what you use, let's just make it not smell like plastic. Some of the guys had a kind of shrimp scent. That works great. My my only thing is I don't like the stuff you spray. I don't like how it gets in the air, I don't like how it gets all over the boat. So that'd be my only request if you're coming out with me, please don't bring a spray scent. Other news at the break wall. It's been getting chilly at night, even though even though it seems like it should be warm, have that have that extra coat. I'd rather have the extra coat, not put it on than be out there when that wind's blowing and needing it. Other things we could talk about, uh, creatures. Creatures haven't been hitting the last couple days. One of my favorite ways to get them, especially during a tough bite, really slowing down, playing the bottom, getting them on creatures. Craws. All right, and I consider the Dark Sleeper to be a creature too. I play it the same way I'd play a creature bait. They've wanted it just a little faster than that, a little faster than you really want to play a creature. Uh, some of the creatures with the tails that kick, the swim craws, you call them. I would say swim craws have a chance. I honestly really didn't throw any swim craws. But this last week, if I were to go back and decide to throw a creature, it probably would have been a swim craw. Because they've wanted that slow swim. They haven't wanted that, that stop and go as much as it's just been a slow, steady. Also, what's worked quite a bit is doing the pendulum, putting it in gear, letting it drift down in a swoop. Also, one of the things that's been productive, and not a lot of fish came this way, but some of my bigger ones came this way about halfway back to the boat. I'd reel it up real quick, drop it back down, and something about that was getting hit. But that wasn't the hot bite. That wasn't where we were getting a lot of fish. But it was getting me the occasional bigger fish. Interested to see what our water temperature looks like this coming week. Hopefully it warms up a little, fish get a little more active. But even if they're not super active, I mean, we're not seeing 60 fish nights right now. But we're definitely getting closer to 30 fish nights. There's fish to be had out there. And sometimes on these nights, that's when the big ones come out to play, as we're seeing. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens coming up. And I would just say, kind of keep your head on a swivel. Keep, keep moving spots. If a spot's not producing, let's try another spot. Don't be afraid to fish fast. When I say fish fast, I don't mean playing your bait fast. I mean spot to spot moving you know occasionally especially if the bite's decent or if we're just trying to figure it out we'll, we'll slow down and we'll play a spot a little longer but don't be afraid to pick up and move or just bump 100 feet down the wall bump another 100 feet down the wall just kind of keep getting into new zones that's been that's been our thing a lot of times we pull up to a spot catch three or four fish, get on a drift and not really catch anymore, get to a new spot, catch two or three fish, not really catch anymore, get to a new spot. But those continual changes kept making it happen, kept getting us the numbers. So yeah, don't be afraid to explore. I think I got to look up the exact number, but I think the number is something like there's 30 miles of legal fishable wall in the, in the Long Beach Harbor all the way from the top to the bottom. That's that's a lot more than you're gonna fish in one night. Don't be afraid to explore it. So yeah, definitely, if you're still here, leave a comment, ask a question. I'll try to answer your questions in the comment section, but I'll also address them here on the next episode. I'll pull up a couple of those right now. 
By the way, if you want to see any of our previous videos, there's a playlist, Break Wall Breakdown, on our YouTube channel. One of our questions was, how does the curly tail work? Curly tail works good. I wasn't necessarily fishing it a whole bunch, but the curly tail especially works good when they're biting on the drop. Another question, what color of line, what pound test? I prefer red line, but any, any line will work. As long as you got a good leader on there, I prefer 40 pound line to a 40 pound leader. Even when we move inside, some guys will will try to scale down and go, oh, y'all fish 20 pounds since we're on the inside. I just got to say that that five pounder we got last week, that thing was wrapped in the kelp. We had to get the boat up in there, get it out of the kelp. It would have been done on 20 pound. You're just, you're just, you weren't getting it out. We're lucky to get it out using the 40. This question is how do you store your plastic lures? I store them in Plano trays, 3,700 narrow. What's the best time of day to fish the wall? I like fishing from sundown on into the middle of the night. I'm not a big fan of daytime fishing the wall. It can be good sometimes. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've had good days fishing the day, but I've had a lot more good days fishing nights. This last one, what kind of batteries do you run for your trolling motor? You know what? Honestly, I don't feel like sticking my head in there right now and looking because that's a little center console and I got a big old head, but I know they were west marine batteries they weren't lithium they were the standard batteries but they were the more expensive ones with the better warranty i bought the cheaper ones the first time and i i wasn't happy with them they died on me a couple times so i bumped up to the pricier ones and i've had much less trouble so all right guys thank you if you've watched along this whole time we'll see you next week